Should you go out and purchase dental insurance if you don't have any through your job in order to make dental care more affordable? My answer is no, and I'll explain why in today's video. Well, hello again, folks, and welcome back to another Dentistry Made Simple video. My name is Dr. Kenneth Goods, and I'm a retired dentist from the state of South Carolina here in the U.S. So in one of my earlier videos, it might have actually been my very first video, come to think of it, which I'll leave a link to here, I was discussing whether or not dentistry was really that expensive. I touched on the need for dental offices to do a much better job at creating value for their dentistry by explaining to their patients why a procedure was necessary, what happens if the procedure is not done, and I emphasized the need for dental offices to come up with ways to make dentistry more affordable for their patients through the use of financing or payment plans. Another factor that I mentioned was whether or not an individual valued dentistry enough to make it a priority over other items, such as a large television or a vacation. Because if they didn't, then they were not very likely to invest too much into their oral health, which was okay because it was their decision to make. Well, just last week, the Wall Street Journal published an article on how the cost of dentistry was the number one reason why people put off or refused to have needed work done, regardless of their age or income level. This according to surveys conducted by the American Dental Association. Furthermore, it was determined that dental care presents the highest level of financial barriers when compared to other healthcare services in making procedures affordable for patients. This, in turn, has caused some people to consider purchasing dental insurance to help reduce the cost of their dentistry. This is a mistake, in my opinion. Now look, if you are fortunate enough to have dental insurance through your work, use it. I'm not saying at all that it's not helpful. It's just that it's not the end-all be-all that patients assume it's going to be. Having dealt with dental insurance companies for over 30 years, I've pretty much heard every complaint in the book from patients regarding their coverage. And here are just a few things that you need to consider. Number one, dental insurance can be confusing since it's considered a separate service from medical insurance which means it has different policies and procedures that many patients are not familiar with. So much so that some insurance providers simply refer to their plans as dental benefits rather than coverage or insurance because it's actually a prepaid reimbursement plan as opposed to true insurance. For comparison, healthcare insurance covers costs after your medical bill reaches a specific financial amount, your deductible. Once you spend that amount on health care, the insurance kicks in. Dental insurance, on the other hand, only covers you up to a specific limit. Typically, that limit is $1,000 to $1,500 annually. When your reimbursable dental costs go over that limit, you are responsible for paying your dental care costs for the rest of the year. Number two. The policy caps on dental insurance have remained the same for the past 40 years. Meanwhile, the costs for dental services continue to rise, meaning you can exhaust your annual dental allowance fairly quickly. That $1,000 back in the 80s may have bought you a good bit of dentistry. Today, not so much. Number three, a typical dental insurance plan offers what is known as 180-50 coverage. This means the plan will pay 100% of the cost of routine preventative and diagnostic care, typically two checkups with cleanings annual. Now to be fair, if there's one big plus with dental insurance is that it does encourage you to get preventative care. They'll pay 80% for fillings and root canals and such, and 50% for crowns and bridges, etc assuming your dentist is in network, meaning that they have signed up to be a provider for this insurance company and will accept the fees that the insurance company says that they will be allowed to charge. But here's the kicker. If your dentist is not in the network of your insurance company, then your dentist can set their own fees 
And now these percentages take on a whole new meaning. They will only apply to the insurance company's fees, not your dentist's fees. If your dentist charges $1,000 for a crown and the insurance company thinks the fee should only be $800, then they will pay 50% on the $800, meaning leaving you with a $600 balance. You really need to crunch the numbers. Number four, many insurance plans have a waiting period before they agree to pay for anything. So be aware of that, especially if you have a pressing dental need. And I don't want to belabor the point, so let me just give you one more. Number five, some procedures are not covered at all, such as braces and cosmetic dentistry. Okay, so what is the too long, didn't read summary here? Again, if you are given dental insurance through your work, great. Use it to its maximum. But for most people, their return on investment just isn't there. You know, dental insurance is extremely profitable to the insurance companies, which is why many of the major carriers offer dental insurance in the first place. That ought to tell you something right there. So what options do you have? Well, Rather than take out a personal loan or dip into your savings or sell some personal belongings, things that people have done to pay for their dental care, several companies out there are realizing that financing designed specifically for dental care can fill a huge void for people. And these plans have been skyrocketing as of late. Offering interest-free payments for between six and 24 months has been big business. Lenders are discovering that people are less likely to default on healthcare purchases compared with travel or consumer goods, in part because they tend to have established relationships with their dentists and physicians. So the acceptance rate for these plans is very high as a result. Speaking from experience, it was a huge success in my practice. It took a lot of pressure off my patients and it was a win-win for everyone. These financing plans are becoming commonplace in most dental offices, so be sure to ask the next time you find yourself needing a lot of dental work, okay? If for some reason financing is not appealing to you, then consider creating a dental emergency fund. Put aside money you might have used for premiums. If you can, save the money in a tax-advantaged account. With a flexible spending account, which is available only with workplace healthcare plans, you can put away money pre-tax to pay for medical expenses, including dental, that your insurer doesn't cover. Now, for those of you without a dentist who happen to live in close proximity to a dental school, this can be a great way to get quality care at a greatly reduced price. Yes, you'll have a dental student working on you. I was one of them. But everything they'll be doing is under the supervision of an experienced dentist. Treatment will take a lot longer to complete as a result, but this can be a great option for some. Ladies and gentlemen, there are alternatives out there. Many people assume that they need to have dental insurance in order to get treatment, and that just isn't the case. Well, let's wrap up today's video, folks. I hope you learned something that you didn't know before. If you enjoyed this video, would you do me the favor of hitting that like button below as it will help this channel grow? Feel free to leave a comment or question as well. Please consider subscribing and be sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos on dentistry made simple. Bye-bye.